You are made of hope and wishes and joy and dust and the desire to see tomorrow. Tomorrow holds the beginning, the unfinished of yesterday. Yesterday is built out of yesterdays where once your ancestry stood. Breathing into this wind that now feels like your own, but it too belonged to your ancestry once. They once were young and hopeful and fleeting with a beating heart inside of their chest with a world inside of their palms. They once lived while wondering what can be better or worse than this while holding on to a world that barely held on to them, yet still they chose the sun each morning. Still they chose the moon each evening. Still chose their family. Still chose to fight. Still chose to grit their teeth. Still chose to break free still chose to believe in their truth, still chose to question, still chose to love, still chose to make their kind of love, still chose to dream of you. Without knowing you could even exist. You were once unfathomable. You were once unbelievable. Once fiction that felt so real in their hearts but sounded so silly on their tongues. You, their magic. You, ancestor in the making. You, Believer of a better world while living in a world that feels so goddamn unbelievable. You still choosing the sun. You still choosing the moon. Still choosing to fight. Grinding teeth breaking free, questioning and loving in a world that will soon let go of your hands but will always hold on to your dreams of a future the way your ancestors dreamt of you. A future that will dream while carrying the reality of your dreams into existence. That, my friends, is a poem, a beautiful poem, one of my favorite poems written by Teray Fowler Chapman. Teray, you did that. You did that. And you also did this. One of my favorite poetry books titled Bread and, again by Teray Fowler Chapman. And in this video, I will be sharing five other books, poetry books that I love and that I think you also may love on your bookshelf, on your coffee table, on your nightstand, wherever it is that you keep your books. These are five poetry books I absolutely love we're also going to be sharing a little poetry over here. So let's get into this. The Selected Poems of Rosario Castellanos. This poetry book is one of my most sacred books on my bookshelf that was gifted to me by my dearest friend, Isaac Kirkman, who transitioned this life, this lifetime, this dimension on January 2nd of 2020. So 
rest in peace to Isaac Kirkman. I love you and I thank you for this gift of this book and these words and the discovery of one of my favorite poets, Rosario Castellanos. And the back of this book has like a mini biography of Rosario, so I'm gonna read it to you really quickly and maybe even briefly. Uh, diplomat, essayist, poet, novelist Rosario Castellanos is one of the most important figures in modern Mexican literature. A pioneering feminist, she was born in Mexico City in 1925 to a family of landowners. She grew up in Comitán, state of Chiapas. She studied philosophy in Mexico City and Spain, taught at various universities in Mexico and the U.S., and was a regular contributor to the Mexican newspaper El Excelsior. A cultural activist, she worked with the Instituto de Ciencias y Artes de Chiapas and many other organizations in the defense of the cultural heritage of the Mayas. She died in 1974 while serving as a Mexican ambassador to Israel. So not only are they a great poet, but an overall legendary, well-respected writer and feminist and activist. And I just love Rosario Castellanos. I've actually been meaning to buy more of their books, but this one has a really good selection of their poems and they are written, they are, of course, you know, Rosario being Mexican, most of their poems are originally written in Spanish, but this book has the translation over to English. So I'm going to share one of their poems with you and I'll just go ahead and maybe read both Spanish and English. But I love, I don't know, like Rosario Castellanos is one of those po poets who writes poems where you just have to reread them over and over and over again because you discover new meanings behind the words and the collection of words and just such an amazing poet. So this one is titled, um, I guess I'll do Spanish first. Maybe I'll just read Spanish in honor of the originality of their work. Estoy aquí, sentada, con todas mis palabras, como con una cesta de fruta verde, intactas. Los fragmentos de mil dioses antiguos derribados se buscan por mi sangre, se aprisionan, queriendo recomponer su estatua. Las bocas destruidas quiere subir hasta mi boca un canto, un olor de resinas quemadas, algún gesto de mestizaje misteriosa roca trabajada pero soy el olvido la traición el caracol que no guardó del mar ni el eco de las más pequeña ola y no miró los templos sumergidos solo miró los árboles que encima de las ruinas mueven su vasta sombra Muerden con dientes ácidos el viento cuando pasa. Y los signos se cierran bajo mis ojos como la flor bajo los dedos torpísimos de un ciego. Pero yo sé, detrás de mi cuerpo, otro, otro cuerpo se agazapa. Y alrededor de mis muchas respiraciones, cruzan furtivamente como los animales noctur nocturnos en la selva. Yo sé en algún lugar los mismo que en el desierto el cactus, un costelado corazón de espinas, está aguardando un hombre como el cactus la lluvia. Pero yo no conozco más que ciertas palabras en el idioma o lápida, bajo que se sepultaron vivo a mi antepasado. Okay, I feel like I actually have to translate this to you in English because it is such, again, one of those poems that you just have to revisit and uh, so beautiful. 
silence around an ancient stone. I sit here with my words intact, as if with a basket of green fruit. The fragments of a thousand ancient toppled gods seek each other in my blood, hold each other captive, eager to repair the statue. From their broken mouths, a song rises to my mouth, smell of burnt resin, gesture of hard worked mysterious rock. But I am oblivion, betrayal, a shell that didn't even hold an echo of the sea's least wave. I don't, I don't look at the submerged temples. I look only at the trees whose vast shade moves above the ruins and whose acid teeth gnash the wind as it streams by. And the signs shut themselves beneath my eyes like a flower in a blind man's clumsy grasp. But I know behind my body crouches another and all around me all around me many breaths cross back and forth furtive as jungle animals at night somewhere i know exactly like a cactus in the desert a starry crown of thorns awaits a man just as the cactus awaits rain but I know only certain words in the language or stone beneath which they buried my ancestor alive. One thing that I love about Rosario Castellanos is that aspects of their work can be very dark. And I love an artist who not only represents light in their work, but darkness too. So I have so much respect for Rosario Castellanos. And if you want to practice Spanish or if you love Spanish and are fluent in Spanish, then highly recommend looking into Rosario's work. Bone by Yersa Daly Ward. Yersa Daly Ward is a writer of Jamaican and Nigerian heritage and was raised by her grandparents in the north of England. Bone is her first collection of poetry and prose. I love investing in a poet's, artist's, writer's first collection, first published, first body of work. You know, it's just such a good feeling to really just invest in their beginning. And I feel like it's titled Bone because it the work that is shared, the poetry that is shared in this book is, has that essence of bareness and of deepness and vulnerability in a way, but also strength. Um, I'm gonna share a couple, couple poems this one is titled, One Day This Will Be Home. It wasn't perfect. It isn't now. I still have days when I want to exit the system quicker than you can say, don't you dare give up now. And you still have days where you can't even taste the sweet in raw honey and neither one of us believes in pills. Days when I so want to kiss you, but your mouth is sour and my thoughts are bitter and I'm angry, just mad, just crazy with it all. But we are each other's home, sweet home, love. The roof is screwed on too tight at times and the walls of our house can pinch a little, but my God, they are always warm. So... Hints of darkness, hints of darkness, but there's truth. You know, like I, I feel like one reason why I just love poetry so much is because at least poetry like this just speaks the truth of someone's truth, you know, in such a poetic, artistic, beautiful, yet raw way. 
This one is titled, What Love Isn't. This is one of my favorite ones. It is not a five star stay. It is not compliments and it is never ever flattery. It is solid, not sweet, but always nutritious. Always herb, always salt, sometimes grit. It is now until the end. It is never a slither, never a little. It is a full serving. It is much, too much and real. Never pretty or clean. It stinks. You can smell it coming. It is weight. It is weight and it is too heavy to feel good sometimes. It is discomfort. It is not what the films say. Only songs get it right. It is irregular. It is difficult and always, always surprising. Ugh. It is solid, not sweet, but always nutritious. I love that. I love that. It stinks. You can smell it coming. It is weight. It is weight. It is too heavy to feel good sometimes. Ugh. Yes. You know when you find a poem that just speaks to you in sometimes some weird, odd, very detailed way? Love that. Such a good book. Recommend this one to you if you want to diversify your book collection, if you just want to explore something new. This is a good one. Love in My Language by Alexandra L. You probably are already familiar with Alexandra L, also known as Alex L. And I say you probably are familiar with them because they are a very well-known, popular, affirmational slash wellness writer and author. And they have several books now. I like Yerissa Daily Ward and like a couple of the other poets that I'm going to be sharing with you have been following Alex's journey from what seems like the beginning. Um, this is one of their earlier books and I'm not necessarily sure. I feel like they're more known for their affirmation writing now <clears throat> and not necessarily their poetry, but their words can just feel very poetic and this is one of those books where you can just like turn to a random page and you know like what you read this one is called shelter i seek refuge in actions and comfort in words thank you for making your heart my home I value the table setting of love that you've arranged for us. You are where I belong. It's kind of like home is where the heart is. Let's see some other one. This one is called Meditate on Love. There's so much beauty in getting still and being quiet. Practice finding peace from within. This one is called Yearning. It's 2 a.m. and all I can think of is reaching out and touching you. The outline of your shadow is etched in my mind, but when I rise to reach for you, your silhouette fades into the night. You make me realize every night what I am missing. I love that. I love that. So these are, you know, somewhat kind of shorter collections of words. Getting a piece of me should not require you wanting me to break. That one's titled Share. I love that. Getting a piece of me should not require you wanting me to break. Very true, very true. So yeah, I feel like Alex's earlier uh, bodies of work are um, really reflectional and, and, and influenced by 
their earlier heartbreaks because you can just get a sense of those heartbreaks and not so healthy relationships that even to this day Alex is very transparent about still healing from so this is a great affirmational poetic book that is not so new but I still love just browsing through the pages of it sometimes so Love in My Language by Alexandra L. The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Kaur. So I am very much so aware that a lot of poetry lovers who are deep in the poetry world and poets also themselves don't necessarily consider Rupi Kaur's work to be poems or just Instagram poetry in general to be real poetry. But y'all, I saw Rupi perform her poetry on stage once. And let me tell you, Rupi can perform poetry, okay? And it was so beautiful. I definitely cried. And there are, there's definitely some amazing poetry in here. And I just love I don't know, I, I, I love the title, first of all, The Sun and Her Flowers. And I also love how this book is broken up by um, wilting, falling, rooting, rising, and blooming. I just think that in itself is a poetic way to compartmentalize or contextualize the sections of the book. Here's a couple poems that I love. This one's titled, To Witness a Miracle. I want to go back in time and sit beside her, document her in a home movie so my eyes can spend the rest of their lives witnessing a miracle. The one whose life I never think of before mine. I want to know what she laughed about with friends in the village within houses of mud and brick, surrounded by acres of mustard plant and sugar cane. I want to sit with the teenage version of my mother, ask her about her dreams, become her pleated braid, the black coal caressing her eyelids, the flower neatly packed into her fingertips, a page in her school books, even to be a single thread of her cotton dress would be the greatest gift. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Like, I love it. Where's the other one? Um, I love this one too, because I feel like we can all really relate to this feeling. This one is titled, The First Mornings Without You. I live for that first second in the morning. When I am still half conscious, I hear the hummingbirds outside flirting with the flowers. I hear the flowers giggling and the bees growing jealous. When I turn over to wake you, it starts all over again. The panting, the wailing, the shock of realizing that you've left. We've all whew, had that feeling, right? Where, I mean, perhaps maybe not all of us, but for those of us who have experienced that feeling of absence of someone of someone's presence that just really grew onto you and you were just so used to and was so consistent and then all of a sudden is gone. It's like a heartbreak in and of its own. It's like a reminder of the heartbreak that exists and to wake up to that, for it to be the first thing of your day, of your morning when you wake and just have that realization, that reminder that they're gone is like, <sighs> Oh, such a heartache. So yeah, the sun and her the sun and her flowers by Ruby Carr. 
I love it. I love Rupi. She is an amazing performer of her work. So I have much respect for Rupi. And also, let's not give so much shade to Instagram poetry. I feel like Instagram poetry has made poetry more accessible to those who never really got into the world of poetry, but have been able to kind of ease into it in a way and relate to it in smaller, more intimate bits of poetry. So I love Instagram poetry for that. I love accessibility in all the ways that it shows up. So that it shows up for good and words that have been created and written from the heart. How can you be mad at that? The last poetry book recommendation is titled Salt by Nayira Wahid. I'm not sure if it was this one or the other Nayira Wahid poetry book that I have of theirs, um, but I did do another video for my channel where I was reading poems from one of their books. So I, I don't remember if it was this one or the other one, but I love both equally as much this one, like the Alex L book that I shared with you, is one of those where I can just turn to any page and find like words that I just love. And uh, Naira truly is one of my favorite poets. This book is so good. And I also just love the simplicity of the book. Like, look how beautiful it is. And yeah let me let me share a couple let me share a couple with you something as simple as the sun asking me out that one is titled the perfect date so some of these are very short but so beautiful this one is titled options you do not have to be a fire for every mountain blocking you. You could be a water and soft river your way to freedom too. Love that. You do not have to be a fire for every mountain blocking you. You could be a water and soft river your way to freedom. I love that, you know, like to me, the way that I interpret this is like whenever an obstacle approaches you in life or encounters you, you don't have to respond to that, to the mountain, to the blockage, to the weight of it all as fire, right? You can be water and respond to it in a softer way. I think that's beautiful. Let's flip to another page. Um, mm, listen to my poems, but do not look for me. Look for you. This one is titled, You. Love that, so simple, but so profound. This one is one of their mo most popular ones that I think went viral on Instagram, you know, a while back. I don't pay attention to the world ending it has ended for me many times and began again in the morning. So a lot of this poetry is like simple, yet so profound. And I respect writers who can use so little words, yet say so much with them. So I love this book, definitely recommend this one. Um, I could finish this in one sitting and I hope that you enjoyed these book recommendations. 
I definitely recommend just diversifying your bookshelf, your collection of books. And poetry is just one of those genres that make you a better listener, a better reader, that make you feel seen, that just, I don't know, it's just a work of art, you know? Just like art that's like hanging on your wall. This is like art that is rusting on your shelf. And I just love poetry so much. I enjoyed reading some of these poems to you because I miss performing on stage and going to open mics. So I got like a little feel for reading poetry again, but Again, hope you all enjoy this. I look forward to recommending more books to you. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, so you don't miss out on any of my weekly inspirational, self-development, real, spiritual product recommending and reviewing and vlogging videos that I publish every week. So. Be a part of my growing community. I will see you in my next video and send this to a friend who you think may love this. So thank you for being here. I appreciate you. So good for you. And I will see you next time. Bye.